hello um yeah so i thought we add one important integral to our important integrals video series and since parts 25 and 26 were about the integral of sec x i thought um as per promise that here i show you the two ways of doing the integral of cosec x dx but first and foremost May the Lord Jesus Christ bless this video, bless you and I, and yeah, let's get on with it. I said there are two ways to do this, so here goes the first method. This first method is a tad bit uh, too inventive for my taste, but it is what it is. <laughs> so here it goes. So like, you go like this. So you multiply um, the original integral by uh, this quotient, which is cosec x plus cot x divided by, well, remember, the only thing, <laughs> the only thing I'm allowed to multiply by is one, right? So clearly, the denominator of the quotient has got to be the same as the numerator of the quotient, right? Okay, okay. So, like that, right? Okay, okay, and obviously this cosec x here is over 1, so we multiply numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator. <laughs> Alright, so when we do that, what do we get? This is what we get. We get cosec squared x plus cosec x code x in the numerator, and in the denominator we get uh, cosec x plus code x. And so I'll do that. So divided by um, cosec x, I have to do that, <laughs> plus cot x. And monsieur de x, right there, right? Okay, okay, okay. So here, the task is pretty simple. If you don't see it, it's u sub. Not me, u sub. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> u equals cosec x um, plus cot x. So what is the u, if u is that, if you are that, <laughs> or if you is that, the u is going to be, the derivative of cosec x is negative cosec x cot x, and the derivative of cot x is negative cosec squared x, and of course dx. Okay, notice that I've got a negative right here and a negative right there. So what I could do is I could factor out a negative. I don't like that. So when we factor out the negative, uh, we could write plus right there, but we must have a minus sign right there, right? And I meant to close the parentheses right here. Why? Because, well, this quantity inside the parentheses, I'm going to call it A, because I don't want to write it over and over and over again. Okay, notice that if you is, if you are paying attention, <laughs> This right here is exactly A, right? This here is A, right? Okay, cool, cool. So first let's uh, solve for dx. So dx is du over negative A. That is dx, right? And so from observing that this here is also A, my bad, from observing that this here is also A, we see that our integral transforms to the following which is, it is now integral of a over, this is what we call u, so u, I mean we call u many things, but no, okay, <laughs> and dx is du over negative a, so times du over negative a, right, now look here, we go, boom, boom, and we take out the negative and write it in front, and so when we do, we're going to get uh, negative integral of uh, negative integral of the natural log well first let me write so 1 over u du and from this you should see that the answer is negative integral of the natural log of u plus c so the answer is negative uh, natural log of the absolute value of u what is u it's cosec x plus cot x so cosec x plus cot x uh, and of course, Monsieur plus C. Um, okay, there we are. So, um, our 
um, final answer is this and I am going to erase everything but the original integral and this final answer. Why? Because I said I'm going to show you how to do this a different way and so we want to check that the second method is the same as the first method. Well, it's going to lead to the same answer. If it was the same as the first method, then you should quit watching this about right now. <laughs> but it's not. It's a very different approach to getting to the same place. And do let me know your preference. <laughs> okay, so um, remember, cosec x is a reciprocal of sine. So from the onset, we can write the integral as 1 over sine x dx, right? Now, 1 over sine x dx is an integral. It doesn't have much to give. It doesn't have much to manipulate. Uh, so we add stuff to it. And what do we add stuff to it? Actually, we multiply stuff to it. But, you know, in English, we add stuff to it. Okay. Which is, um, <laughs> this is what we do. We're going to multiply the denominator by sine x. And, of course, yet again, I'm only allowed to multiply by 1. So the numerator of this best b sine x also. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So, now, this is equal to the integral of um, sine x over sine squared x and monsieur dx. Now, some of us were really good trig students who so were paying attention and we know that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. So we go, this is the same as integral of sine x over 1 minus cosine squared x and dx. Well, now you should see that what we should do is u sub because, because, like, if we let u equal cos x, then du is negative sine x dx. And so then um, du over negative sine x is equal to dx. And so with this substitution, we see that the integral here is going to turn into this. I can write, like, Arabic backwards. So <laughs> it's going to be like... Um, sine x, right? This is that over, and then it's 1 minus u squared, right? Because u is cos x, and then I just said dx is du over negative sine x, so du over negative sine x. <laughs> um, okay, there you go. And um, so this is. Well, you see that minus sign, I'm going to put it in front, and otherwise, right, that what I have is du over 1 minus u squared. I'm getting old. <laughs> Did you hear, like, the Tracy Morgan joke that, like, when you know you get old is, like, when you, like, have to lean when you pee, lean on something? <laughs> so, no, um, no, actually, I'm doing it because, like, like, can do this so casually. <laughs> Almost tripped myself up on the wire, though. <laughs> still corny. Um, all right, all right, all right. So uh, the rest of what we have to do is this integral. For a second, I'm going to set aside that negative, right? And I'm just going to work on the integral part. Clearly, the integral part is just partial fraction decomposition. Specifically, we want to know uh, 1 over 1 minus u squared um, is equal to when it will equal to a over 1 minus u plus b over um um, let me do a over 1 plus u and b over uh, 1 minus u. It wouldn't really matter, but like, let's do it that way. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now, I have lots of videos on partial fraction decomposition, so I am not going to spend a ton of time doing this or explaining it, so I'm going to do it really quickly. So, if you know the process, first thing we do is we got to make this denominator the same as these two, so that means 1 minus u here, 1 minus u here, and 1 plus u here and 1 plus u here, right? Okay, so clearly now this here is 1 minus u squared, and so is this. And so in fact, I could do this and write just one denominator, right? Okay, so I'll do that. Um, so all over 1 minus u squared, like that. Now, this equation has to hold true for all u, and clearly as the denominators are the same, we just have to ensure that the numerators are the same. Namely, we have to make sure that 1 is equal to a times 1 minus u plus
plus b times 1 plus u. And again, I said, this equation needs to hold true for all u. So if we pick our u strategically, we can solve for a and b efficiently. And this is what I'm saying. If we let u equal negative 1, then this says 2a on the left side. We still have 1. So 1 equals 2a. This term is annihilated by u equals negative 1. So clearly, we gather that a is equal to half. Ah, cool. And the other good choice of u is u equals 1, because that will annihilate this. And we're going to get 1 is equal to 2b. From that, we get b is equal to a half. Now, I don't know if your memory is as good as mine, but we started off saying, when we're seeking a and b, we started off saying a over 1 plus u, and then plus b over 1 minus u. Um, okay, so we just learned a and b are both 1 half. So that means we put a 1 half a key and a key. <laughs> so 1 half, 1 half. No need to translate this video. It's in old languages. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like doing this integral right here and then du and a minus sign right there. That's the same as putting uh, putting a minus sign right here and doing integral, right? And then um, du right there, right? Okay, but then we could write that that's the same as negative a half factoring out the half from here and here. Uh, integral 1 over uh, 1 over 1 plus u and then plus 1 over 1 minus u du. Okay, cool. Now, this is going to be equal to negative a half times the natural log of uh, the absolute value of uh, 1 plus u minus well, actually, if I keep the minus 1 half all the way in front, I'll have minus because this integral is going to lead with a minus. You should, like, look at the detail of y uh, minus the natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus u. And then, of course, monsieur plus c. Okay, cool. So then, now, we said that u is cos x, right? Right here. So if we plug in cos x here and here, this answer is not going to look like that answer. So we've got a bit more work to do because, well, if we're doing this correctly, they have to be the same answer, right? First, let's use the log quotient rule to combine these two. So we're going to write minus a half natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus u over 1 minus u and then plus c, right? Okay, cool. Not e, c. Okay. <laughs> and then... Uh, we can use the log power rule to put the one half right there, which means square root, right? So we could just have negative, and then I can put the square root inside of the absolute values because, well, it's a positive square root. So actually, the absolute values are redundant, but I'll keep them. I'll keep them just like, you know, for insurance and stuff. Wait, okay. So now if I substitute cosine for u, it's still not the same as the answer I've boxed there. Yeah, 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 you're right. But it just means that we have to do more work. So it's um, square root of, and then 1 plus cos x, um, and then over 1 minus cos x, right? It's really not that much work, um, that much more work. Um, so there's a plus c at the end. But let's do the bit that's going to convince us that this answer is the same as that other than the plus c that I'm going to write over there. Well, they're the same because I'm going to multiply 1 minus cos x here by 1 plus cos x. And so then, again, I'm only allowed to multiply by 1, so I have to multiply the numerator by 1 plus cos x. Okay, cool. So then, if I extend this, this is what we've got. Well, Okay, I'll make you and ha me happy, plus C. Let's come back here. So if we come back here, this is all we have got to do to finish. Well, notice that this says 1 plus cos x all squared inside the square root. So we've got um, minus the natural log of the square root of, it's 1 plus cos x all squared over 1 minus cos x times 1 plus cos x make 1 minus cos squared x, which we earlier 
uh, said was sine squared x. So this denominator is sine squared x, right? Okay, so that's sine x all squared. But wait, the numerator and the denominator of the quotient inside the square root are both squared, so we could just write them like that. Ah, cool. And of course then, um, after I throw on my plus c, I go the square root and the squaring cancel and I'll call back our absolute values here so it really 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 looks like that um, but it's pretty clear now um, that they are the same answers because look at what we've got we've got minus natural log of the absolute value of once the square root is gone by the squaring here we've got 1 plus cos x over sine x right an absolute value closed plus c, but this is 1 over sine x um, plus 1 over cosine over sine x and plus c. Clearly, you see they're the same answer because 1 over sine x is equal to cosecant x and cosine over sine x is equal to cotex, so I'm done.